This episode of Weekly Weird News is sponsored by Stitch Fix and by Honey. Earlier this week on Tech News Day, we talked about how parts of the United States are opening back up again, mm -hmm. even though the spread of COVID-19 is still far from under control. One industry that's struggling a bit to make up for lost time is the restaurant business. Uh, yes, lots of states are now allowing people to once again dine in, but usually with strict social distancing rules limiting the amount of people who can be in a restaurant at once. As we talked about, a lot of people are going to just keep avoiding restaurants, regardless of whether they're open or not, because they're still afraid of getting sick. On the other hand, though, people who do want to go to restaurants might not enjoy it as much. It's just not the same with all that empty space between all the tables. Well, some restaurants are dealing with this feeling of emptiness in creative ways. Sure, every other table can't have people sitting at them, but there's nothing in the rule book about not dressing up a bunch of mannequins and seating them at the empty tables or the booths. Oh, well, that's what Northern Virginia restaurant The Inn at Little Washington has done, and look at that. Feels just like the packed, fine dining experience of pre-pandemic times. Everyone's dressed to the nines and enjoying a nice, quiet meal in this beautifully decorated three Michelin star restaurant. Or at least they're pretending to enjoy a nice meal because they're mannequins. They can't eat. And what brings me to like the bars, I understand. But like restaurants and then social distancing at a restaurant, it's just like, just eat at your house. Do you really just like eating a, with, in a room with other people? This is a Michelin star restaurant, Ricky. That's the star. Oh, the service, yes. The star is for the service, the ambiance. I, I understand. It's for the, uh, whole, the whole experience. A fine dining restaurant, yes, you go there for the experience as well as the food. But no. what I'm saying is like a normal restaurant, It's you're just going there for like background noise and people talking and kids screaming and I don't know. I don't know. If I, I eat at home, I got to talk to my wife and kids. I'd rather be out at a restaurant and just tune out. Yeah. Like, going to a restaurant now is like fighting in a war. Mm. You're like, you're doing it to be proud of being an American. That's right. Yeah, there's a point of My pride. My patriotic duty. Exactly. So, yeah, currently Virginia is only allowing restaurants to serve food in outdoor areas at 50% capacity. But the plan for phase two, whenever that happens, is to allow 50% capacity for indoor dining. And the inn at Little Washington is ready to go for when that happens. Uh, Patrick O'Connell, chef and owner of the inn, told Fox 5 DC... I've always had a thing for mannequins. <laughs> they never complain about anything, and you can have lots of fun dressing them up. When we needed to solve the problem of social distancing and reducing our restaurant's occupancy by half, the solution seemed obvious. Fill it with interestingly dressed dummies. This would allow plenty of space between real guests and elicit a few smiles and provide some fun photo ops. The Inn at Little Washington has always celebrated the living theater of a restaurant. We're all craving to gather and see other people right now. They don't all necessarily need to be real people. Sounds like this guy was really excited to finally get his mannequins out of Ooh. storage and start dressing them up again. Yeah. It's not weird now, is it, honey? <laughs> it's not one of my dark secrets anymore, is it? Yeah. The public storage unit was only like $5 a month for the last 30 years. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, it was full of mannequins and weird old clothes. <laughs> and yeah, I didn't really have a reason for any of it, but who's laughing now? And sure, I'd go down there every Saturday for no reason and yeah. spend 45 minutes before leaving, taking nothing with me. Yeah, sure, some of them have weird holes in them. <laughs> but those can be covered up with the right undergarments. Yeah. Uh, sounds like this guy's having a blast with his yeah, dummies. Yeah, good for him. Uh, now, look, you may say that this looks like a terrifying and deeply, deeply unsettling place to enjoy any meal, and I'd have to agree. Yeah. On the other hand, despite the inn being a fancy uh, fine dining establishment, it's also apparently known for being a bit of a kooky spot. There's a cheesemonger who speaks entirely in cheese puns while going table to table, pushing a cart that's shaped like a cow that moves. Uh, a few years back, they announced a tiny 12-room expansion to their hotel rooms, uh, a bug hotel. Mm. And uh, their fancy chicken coop apparently has a chandelier inside. With the man who is uh, seeming to me as quite eccentric yeah. with his fascination for dressing up dummies. I understand everything a bit more now. Yeah. And apparently it's a great place to eat. Yeah. Three Michelin stars. I would love to see the person who went there for the Michelin guide. I bet he had one of those mustaches that curls yeah. like this. Ooh, delightful. Oh, the, the cheesemonger approaches. And the cart goes moo. moo. This is going in the guide. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, I mean... Eating while surrounded by a bunch of lifeless dummies dressed like it's the 1940s. It's at least consistent with the overall vibe of this place. Yeah, I think they can make it work. Perhaps more than like, you know, if you did this at like Denny's. 
guys, it's kind of different. Weird. Different. It, it looks like one of the. It, it would look like uh, one of like the nuclear testing sites. <laughs> or just like the, it, it was just blown to smithereens yeah. except for the dummies that are sitting the there. The dummies are here to just, you know, see how much uh, an A-bomb is going to fuck shit up here. Mm-hmm. Yes. But uh, yeah, down in South Carolina at a restaurant called Open Hearth, they're using a similar method to fill their dining area while adhering to social distancing guidelines. And, you know, whether this is more or less creepy to you than the mannequins really depends. <laughs> I mean, if you're especially creeped out by the uncanny valley, the mannequins are probably worse because open hearth is you just using blow up dolls <laughs> that are you know much much less likely to be mistaken for real people. Yeah, and the photos are great because there's like older couples in there. Oh, it's all old people. Yeah, yeah. Haven't seen you since the war. Yeah, <laughs> they're they're dressed up and they, you know they're not fucked dolls. They don't have a like a hole for the mouth. But they do look like they're agape though. Yeah, they look like yeah. the ones you get down at like the party store. Yes, it's like a goof. It's yeah. a, it, like a bachelor party one that like yeah. no one's really going to fuck it unless yeah. the, you're the one guy who gets a little too drunk. Not till 3 a.m. Yeah. Uh, anyways, the restaurant's owners, they told the local news, quote, I dread putting that yellow tape across the booths and making everybody think this is a condemned restaurant or that things are in bad shape. So she and her staff came up with the idea of buying 10 blow-up dolls, dressing them up, and using them to fill up space. And while... You might find it unsettling. Uh, it seems to have made some of the restaurant's older male patrons just kind of horny, actually. I might even kiss one of those dolls for the night's over. <laughs> actually, I'm kind of in, falling in love with the one over there. My wife don't get too jealous, but the one over there with the long hair, she keeps looking at me. Every I walk down the hall, she looks at me. No matter what angle I'm at, it's like she's looking at me. They tried to kick me out for kissing three of them. I'd walk up to one and I'd kiss them on the mouth if they let me. That's what I'm saying. Like, that like, one's giving me the eyes. It's like, uh, you know, telling his wife to calm down and walks up and he's like, I haven't seen you since Vietnam. Mm-hmm. We were stuck on that boat together and me and the boys had our way with you. Yeah. And you, you never complained. So, yeah. Yeah. Those guys been in quarantine a bit too long, it would seem. Mm-hmm. But speaking of creative business innovations to come out of this pandemic, let's switch gears now from lighthearted to extremely morbid. Fun. Uh, an advertising company executive down in Colombia saw the COVID situation in neighboring countries like Ecuador, where hospital beds are in short supply and many poor families can't even afford coffins for their deceased loved ones. And he came up with a potential solution. The coffin bed. Wow. It's a hospital bed that turns into a coffin. Basically, it's just a big human-sized cardboard box with an aluminum frame, side rails, and a base with wheels. When the patient is alive, it's a bed. When the patient dies, you just move a few things around, toss the body inside, and throw the whole thing in the ground. It's all very efficient. Uh, and the beds can hold up to 330 pounds, or 150 kilograms. And they cost just $85 a piece, a fraction of the cost of a traditional hospital bed or coffin. So far, it sounds like doctors are a bit skeptical of the cardboard <laughs> coffin bed, but the ad agency, who haven't had a whole lot to do for the last couple of months, they're donating 10 of them to hospitals in southern Colombia where resources are in short supply. Look, all the ad, no one's doing ads. We got nothing to fucking do here, so mm. I came up with the coffin bed. I'm Mike Lindell, and we've made a new <laughs> coffin bed for everyone. <laughs> You're my gonna, coffin. <laughs> it's called my coffin, and it's you're gonna if you feel if you like coffin. it while you're alive. And wait till you spend the rest of eternity rotting it. Ugh. I used to be a crackhead. Yeah. And now I make pillows. The my pillow guy, his backstory is so funny because it's like a lot of it's clear, clearly bullshit. He's just like, I was doing so much crack that my dealer staged an intervention for me. Yeah. Yeah. I, that no, that didn't happen. I don't think so, that, buddy. That would never fucking happen. <laughs> Anyways, uh, let's move on now to some uh, <laughs> Jacob Wool news. Sure. Yep. 22-year-old Jacob has accomplished so much for his age, stock trading whiz, political operative, Instagram influencer, by which we mean he's probably the youngest person to ever be officially banned from futures trading, he's engaged in an absurd number of political smear jobs that have all failed spectacularly, and he's nowadays mostly just giving terrible advice on Instagram and trying to get people to sign up for his OnlyFans, where he does not show hog nor hole. Mm, Apparently, he's just trying to give fitness advice, but, you know, the closer he gets to rock bottom, Closer we're getting to that hog Mm -hmm. and that hole. Uh, He's also, of course, facing some pretty serious felony charges that, uh, thankfully for him, have been delayed quite a bit by our sluggish legal system and the coronavirus pandemic, which he might be behind that, too. Who knows? You know what I was thinking? You know who really uh, fucking face planted during this whole thing? Lori Loughlin. If she would have (sighs) just 
<laughs> just taking the deal. Yeah. She, even if she had gotten an extended stay through this whole thing in prison, yeah. she would have been out like that. Yeah. Like, it would have been all behind yeah, her. it would have been a couple weeks. And now it's like... For the now first... she's in jail, essentially. What well, I don't want to say in jail because she's in her big house or whatever. But yeah. she's having to, like, quarantine even or isolate even in her large house, however big it is. And then she has to go to jail after that. Yeah. It's and, funny. You know, jails... Uh, I was looking at the, the list of, like, you know, the New York Times data site on this. And uh, you can, like, you know, see at the city or county level which places have, like, the highest density of mm-hmm. coronavirus cases. And there's like, uh, there's this one town, I can't remember where it is, but it's like one in seven residents has tested positive for coronavirus. So I was like, wait, what the fuck? Why haven't I heard of this? There's only uh, a prison in the town? Yeah, it's yeah. a prison town where like yeah. the most of the population is prisoners. And like more than half the fucking prisoners in this jail or this prison have, they've tested positive for it. Wow. It's fucking wild. Anyways, back to Jacob Wall. Last week, we talked about his latest attempt to pin extremely flimsy rape accusations on an enemy of the right wing, Dr. Anthony Fauci. How dare he? Uh, And uh, how the whole thing fell apart once the alleged victim came out and admitted that it was bullshit. And the latest news is that in addition to everything else, Jacob Wall apparently owes a bunch of money to the state of Arizona due to an investment fraud lawsuit uh, that came uh, for all the way back from 2016. And that's before he pivoted careers to being a shitty knockoff Roger Stone. He took some people's money, he invested it, and they never saw a dime. So the court ordered him to pay his victims around $38,000 in restitution and penalties. I mean, it seems like a pretty small amount for a guy who has cultivated an image of opulence and success, but um, shockingly, Jacob Wall has never paid any of it. (laughs) I know. Well, now the Arizona Attorney General's office say that they are actively pursuing collection efforts on that money, and they are charging interest. Spokesman for the Arizona Corporation Commission reached out to Salon to let them know that, quote, the commission through the Arizona Attorney General's office is actively pursuing collection efforts against Mr. Wall. Mr. Wall has not paid anything since the matter was sent to the Attorney General's office for collections. Given his indictment last year, I would venture that any available funds are going to pay his criminal defense counsel. Between penalty and restitution, Mr. Wall owes approximately $43,000. The Attorney General's office has engaged California counsel to assist in collection efforts. Those California lawyers are using all statutorily allowed collection methods to obtain the funds owed to the state. Watch your back, Jacob. He's going to have to cut back on those cigars. Or maybe this is why he did the OnlyFans. Maybe. Yeah. Back in 2017, Wall and his attorneys did the same thing they're doing now with his current felony charges, just delaying the thing as much as possible. The commissioner asked Wall's attorney, I'm wondering why we're going through this exercise and why you think your client is going to make payment on a later date if he's not able to make payment today. Wall's attorney replied, this is a relatively small amount. I know you guys have seen hundreds of thousands of dollars for these types of cases, to which the commissioner replied, it's not a small amount to the investor, so don't belittle it. They still gave him an extra month before he had to start making monthly payments of $1,371.61. But, surprise, uh, he just never paid any of it. And three years later, his balance, it has not changed. In fact, because of interest, it's going up. Yeah. I mean, honestly, it's incredible just how much Jacob Well has managed to get away with in such a short amount of time. Uh, it's so much that we almost forgot about uh, that time that he filed a false police report about uh, fake death threats that he yeah. sent himself. Um yeah, between the multiple instances of financial fraud and uh, all the times that he's publicly defamed various high-profile political figures, uh, it's a hell of a rap sheet for a 22-year-old. And the fact that he's managed to never see the inside of a jail cell for any of it is enough to make anyone lose some or all faith in the American justice system. What do you mean money buys freedom? Yeah. Also, 22, he looks old. He looks way he older. He kind of does. Yeah, yeah he's, he's got that young old thing going. Uh-huh. But he, yeah, he's starting to look a bit leathery. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, it, it's all, it's going to catch up to him at some point. It has to at this point, but I don't know. Who knows when it will? I, I guess with financial crimes, they're just like, yeah, well, you. Yeah. Uh, he's not going to kill anybody. You stole someone's life savings. I mean, whatever. he did kind of uh, allegedly convince someone to kill themselves because of dealing with Well, him, he but took all the guy's money. Yeah, the, the guy, the guy yeah, killed yeah, himself. Yeah. So yeah. he is kind of an, uh, a danger to society. Uh, yeah, I would say so. But, uh, we need to put him and Vitaly in a ring because they're both like jacked. Be a good fight. I mean, I, it, it seems like he is training right now either for prison or for some sort of celebrity boxing match where he can raise some money to keep paying his lawyers. Yeah, true. But uh, yeah, I knew the, be- the best part of the uh, Salon article is the final sentence. Uh, questions directed to a phone number associated with a number of Wolves Ventures and email addresses were met with derision. 
Cool. I would love to see the responses, but I, I like leaving it vague like that. We reached out to him. But this he is Jacob's mother. <laughs> Quit calling this phone number. Yeah. I keep telling everyone it's not his. It's mine. Anyways, that's, uh, that's it for this week's Jacob Wall news. Now it's time for some Kim Jong-un news. He is alive and well, much to the dismay of the haters. Sorry, and, haters. And uh, he'll likely live forever thanks to the cyborg heart that his doctors implanted in him. Allegedly. Yeah. Most things about Kim are alleged thanks to how isolated and secretive North Korea is, but there's one unlikely person who actually has a lot of firsthand insight into the glorious leader, Dennis Rodman. Dennis Rodman being the former NBA star and notorious weirdo, he's visited uh, North Korea multiple times and counts Kim Jong-un as a personal friend. And recently on Mike Tyson's podcast, Hot Boxing, uh, which is great, it's it makes sense. He's a boxer who has a weed company. Yeah. Have you seen the videos of him training recently? No. It's scary. I mean... The man... He's one of the greatest. Yes. The, all the videos of his old fights, terrifying. Yeah. You should see the Destroyed one... He's like in his 50s and he's training now and it is still terrifying. Yeah. Anyways, uh, on that podcast, Hot Boxing, uh, he discussed uh, the first trip that he made to the Hermit Kingdom. Yeah, so first off, apparently Rodman didn't even know who Kim Jong-un was when he agreed to go on his first trip over there in 2013, along with the Harlem Globetrotters and Vice News. Quote, I said, who's that guy? He said, that's our leader. I said, leader of what? <laughs> he says, Kim Jong-un. And I said, I have no clue who the fuck this guy is. <laughs> Great. Uh, Rodman describes his experience attending his first event there. He said... I got 22,000 North Koreans. All of a sudden, they stand up. They start clapping. Start clapping at me loud. I'm thinking, they're doing it for me because they turn around, look to me like this. I say, oh, shit. I start waving, something like that. They say, no, that's for him. I love that Rodman's first thing in North Korea is just nagging <laughs> Kim Jong-un. Who the I fuck are you? <laughs> Loser. Those claps are for me. Uh, Rodman says once he and Kim got a chance to talk, Kim told him that they'd initially tried to get Michael Jordan to come so over. See, nagged him back. Yeah, so <laughs> he, he, but he declined. Michael Jordan declined. Um, so yeah, this is how this is how big ego. Yeah. Kind of uh, they 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 like take jabs at each other. Uh, hello, Dennis. Kind of you were uh, not our first choice, no. obviously, but we're yeah. glad you're here. Uh, anyways, Kim then invited Rodman to dinner, and according to Rodman, quote. We're getting drunk as shit. Stuff like that. He gets up, starts singing karaoke. Have no clue what the fuck he's even talking about. Everybody's clapping. He has this 18-piece woman's band. I mean, these fucking girls are fucking hot, hot. And the whole time they played one fucking song. One song. It was the fucking theme from Dallas. I go, what the fuck? What is this all about, right? I said, theme from Dallas? He said, that's all we know. <laughs> Amazing. Who shot JR? <laughs> That's what everyone's... The hot topic in uh, North North Korean's uh, newspaper. Yeah, they still don't know. They still... <laughs> they will never be... You know who did it? Kim Jong-un. Yeah. Kim Jong-un shot JR. JR was killed by... Uh, someone rubbed VX gas on him at the yeah. airport. Yeah. Weird. Uh, Robin says he then suggested that the band learn some songs by uh, Van Halen, Pearl Jam, the Rolling Stones... You know, stuff like that for his next visit. Though it's unclear whether they actually did that. You would hope they would, though. Yeah. You know. But always, always fun to get a snapshot of uh, inside North Korea. Yeah, I, I, I watched a little bit more of this this uh, Mike Tyson podcast. It's uh, pretty interesting. Dennis Rodman and Mike Tyson, both very interesting guys. Very you gotta watch Last Dance. I'm telling you, Last Dance is you'd like it. Yeah, I'll get around to it. Yeah. Anyways, before we get into this week's weirdest headlines, this episode is sponsored by Stitch Fix. Wouldn't it be great if every clothing store you shopped at had only your size, what styles you like, at the price you want? Well, Stitch Fix is a company focused on making that happen. Stitch Fix is an online personal styling company that makes getting you clothes you love effortless. It's a completely different way to shop that's all about you every time. To get started, go to stitchfix.com weird to set up your profile, and they'll deliver great looks personalized just for you in your colors, styles, and budget. You pay a $20 styling fee for each fix, which is credited towards anything you keep. Schedule at any time, and there's no subscription required. Plus, shipping, returns, and exchanges, they're all easy and free. Stitch Fix does all the hard work for you, making great style effortless for everybody, including men, women, and kids. Get started today at stitchfix.com slash weird, and you'll get 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. That is stitchfix.com slash weird for 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. Stitchfix.com slash weird. And this episode is sponsored by Honey. We all shop online a lot. Yes. But did you know you can make online shopping even better? Well, you can with Honey. 
Honey is a free online shopping tool that automatically finds the best promo codes and applies them to your cart. It makes online shopping finally feel as easy as it's supposed to be. Imagine you're shopping on one of your favorite sites, Target, Macy's, whatever. When you, drop, when you check out, this little box drops down and all you have to do is click apply coupons. You wait a few seconds for it to scan for every promo code on the internet and then boom, you watch the prices drop. Yeah, I said it last time, but I uh, got my wife a necklace for her anniversary and uh, saved me a, vi- a not insignificant amount of money. It was yeah. actually pretty surprising. So that was uh, that was great. Yeah. I'm shopping potentially maybe buying a standing desk soon. Ooh. And uh, there's some crazy, because they're not cheap. And there's a lot of honey coupons that I found. It's like 10% off. But when we're talking like hundreds of dollars yeah. for it a counts. desk, it adds up quite a bit. So, yeah. yeah. Anyways, uh, Honey has found its over 18 million members, uh, about two billion dollars in savings. Uh, Honey supports over 30,000 stores online. They're adding more every day. Users they love Honey, and that's why it has over 100,000 five-star reviews on the Google Chrome Store. Not using Honey is literally passing up free money. It's free to use, and it installs in just a few seconds. Plus, it's backed by PayPal, so you know it's reliable. Get Honey for free today at, uh, by using our link so they know you're using it from us. Joinhoney.com slash weird. That is joinhoney.com slash weird. It's getting hot in here. It's getting very hot. Let's do uh. some headlines. Come on. Let's go. Let's get this shit knocked out. Let's do it. Woo. Headlines. Ready? Go, Elliot. Prince Harry is friendless and unemployed in LA. Misses having a structure. So he, he's basically every young man who moves to Los Angeles, you know, with uh, just a few dollars and a dream, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, you realize you can't afford to do anything. You get there so you and you're like, "Sit on your couch." Wow, this is a lot more depressing than I was led to believe by uh, the movies and the media. Yeah. I don't have any friends. Job market here sucks. It's hot as shit. Why did I move here in the summer? Yeah, yeah. I'm living. These, these royals are just like us. I'm living in Tyler Perry's house, like every normal <laughs> person that moves to LA. Uh, I think they just bought a house in like West Hollywood or something. I don't know. Yeah, it is funny timing though, because I mean he probably does have him and his wife tons of friends, but yeah. they they moved to LA like right as a fucking pandemic hits. So like Prince Harry, can't if, you, do anything. if you watch this show, we'll be friends with you. Oh yeah, dude. I think it'd be great to have him as a friend. We we've gone on record saying. You, Megan, the best royals. The absolute best royals. What the tabloids, don't say that though. they don't want to be royals anymore. I know. Well, you best best former royals. Yeah. What the tabloids did to you and your wife, terrible. Yes. Fuck them. Get mm-hmm. out, I'm, we're, we're proud of you for getting the hell out of England and then going to Canada and being too cold and then coming down here to L.A. Yeah. And Welcome listen, over. We forgive you for wearing that Nazi uniform. It was Halloween. Yeah, it was a different time. <laughs> Can't do it anymore though. Just but you yeah. get your one. You get your one shot. You Everybody the, gets one. You got that out of your system before it was a, a much bigger problem. Yeah, yeah. I respect that. Uh huh. And well, also, uh, you know, thank you for your service. Yes. Uh, give us a shout, buddy. Yeah. Use your secret Twitter account that we know you have to yeah. hit us up. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on. LA County Jail inmates trying to infect themselves with coronavirus. Sheriff says this was debunked though, right? I don't know. I mean, it's according to the sheriff and like the L.A. County Sheriff's Department oh, just is just terrible. Notoriously like corrupt. Didn't and one just get like shit. indicted? I don't know the latest, but yeah. there was like just a few years ago, like the FBI put like a fake prisoner in L.A. County Jail and yeah. just like uncovered all sorts of like fucked up corruption. So I, don't, yeah. I do not trust the L.A. County Sheriff's Department. No. One bit. Um, but according to them. Uh, the the prisoners there are all seeing that if you test positive for coronavirus, you get put in the nice like you know hospital ward. Mm-hmm. So apparently they're trying to get it. I I don't know. I mean it's entirely possible if people who didn't know how bad the disease is, they might try to do that. But uh, I don't know. It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Yeah. Anything with the LA Sheriff's Department, grain of salt. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Take it. Moving on, 60-year-old golfer wins amateur event using only a putter. Yeah, this guy's a fucking, this guy's awesome. He, uh, it's just that he got into golf as, like, a, once he, like, retired, like, much later in life. He got, like, so good at golf in such a quick period of time that he's like, this isn't even fun anymore. I'm too good at this. And he says, like, one of his friends is like, well, you want to give yourself a challenge? Try going out there and using only a putter. So he did. Now, yeah. he, he, it's hilarious. He does, he the full doing swing? drives <laughs> with the fucking putter, and it's like, whoosh, Perfect. Wow. This yeah, this guy dude is awesome. Yeah, I mean, he, is he going to join like the seniors PGA tour or something? I don't know. I mean, like he, it, this was like he can do a bunch of like pro ams. Yeah. I mean, well, this was like uh, I think he, now that he won this, he gets to move up to another tier. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, the, this PGA senior tour, it's it's the same as the PGA where there's like 
10 different levels, and you can sort of move your, move up. Well, it's great for him. 60's like, uh, 60, I mean, it is kind of old, but 60's, like, you still have a, quite a bit of life ahead of you. Yeah. So good for him for discovering uh, that he's like a complete fucking pro at golf. This yeah, week. and also, I, I, think, I don't know if it was this tournament. I think it was this one where it's like, yeah, my putter broke like, the day before, so I just ran down to Goodwill and bought a, an old one for like three dollars. Uh, <laughs> I hate people who are naturally talented at things. Yeah, stupid. Yeah, man who requested trial by combat in custody dispute clears sanity test requests testing for ex-wife and her attorney. <laughs> I love we, this. This is an old one that we yeah. Talked this is about. like the most petty court. So case. yeah, he, the guy he wanted to do a trial by combat for custody. Mm-hmm. The court ordered a sanity test. He cleared it. He was found to be sane. Yeah. Now he apparently thinks that that's like. You know, a good thing. Yeah. The only reason they would test you for your sanity is to see if you're like actually insane and like can't be held accountable for your actions. Now that they found you sane, they know it's like that, that confirms that you're just a fucking asshole yeah. and not, and you don't have your sanity as an excuse. Yeah, he's just, the, the, this is the most petty custody yeah. case ever. Yeah. Like if he was insane, it'd be like, okay, well, we'll get you the help you need. But, yeah, now but it's you like, can't have your no, kids. you're perfectly sane yeah. and you're a fucking prick. Yeah, a total weirdo. He's not insane. He's just an asshole. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, this, the plot thickens on. What, this how one. crazy would it be if her, if his wife turned out to be insane? It'd be pretty wild. Yeah. Um, well, we'll have to keep you guys updated. Well, that's cool. None of you can have the kids now, I guess. Yeah, the kids uh, they belong to the state. Yeah, they are wards of the state now. Mm-hmm. Scientists have discovered huge saber tooth anchovies from prehistoric times, and they must be delicious. Yeah, In one of these things. So many pizzas. Yeah. That's the thing I heard about. Uh, someone said this. Uh, I read it online that uh, anchovies, you know, they get a bad rap as like a topic. Well, it was, this was so, like propaganda from like the late '80s and early '90s. Like every kid's cartoon was like ew, anchovies. Ew, gross. Hey, one pizza, please. No anchovies. Yeah, because it was like an option that wasn't normal. But yes, but I, uh, I, I, I forget who said it or where I read it, but it was just like anchovies are great alone, not as a topic. And I've had them alone. It's not bad. It's just salt. It's yeah, just, they're very salty. That's yeah. the only thing. But I, I didn't have anchovies on pizza until I like went to Europe and I saw it like they like, had it like on display. You Americans pies. are crazy. And I was like, delicious. Let's fucking try it. And I was like, not bad. It's uh, like two days worth of salt I just ingested, but pretty it's good. Not that much different than a pepperoni, to yeah. be honest. <laughs> so yeah, but yeah, these big fucking everything was bigger. The giant anchovies, like I miss the old days when huge. everything was bigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. everything's bigger in prehistoric times. <laughs> the state motto of prehistory. Yeah, exactly. Men less likely to wear face masks because they're not cool and a sign of weakness. Yeah, that scans. Uh, seems about right. Looks like a pair of uh, women's undergarments I'm putting on my face. If I put that mask on my face, people will know that I'm too weak to fight the virus using my own no. strength and willpower. No one can see your face, so who gives a shit? Yeah, this is a weird fucking... I mean, you see this a lot. They'll know like, who I am because my Dick's Sporting Goods hat with the fishing lures tied to yeah. it. Yeah. I, it, yeah, it's a bit, and then like, yeah, they did this whole like actual psychological analysis. Like, this is a study. They yeah. found that like men, for whatever reason, are more than women believe that they're not going to get the virus, even though like the, the death rate for men the, is yeah, way higher. The death higher. rate for yeah. men is like way higher than for women. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's fucking weird. Uh, that's what I it. don't get though. Is it's like uh, uh, you're anonymized by the mask. Yeah. So what do you care what people think? And I guarantee you, no one thinks this. But like, I, I, anytime I see a dude in a mask, like, pussy. Yeah, I think the only the only <laughs> way this makes sense is like people who aren't taking it seriously or doing whatever, and then you like show up to like a gathering with them. Like you show up at like Hooters with your buddies, and you're the only one wearing a mask. Gay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the only like scenario. Well, it's, it's, I mean, like. There was like, there's been a bunch of stuff. Look at Elliot with the pussy ass mask on. There was that one. He's from, scared of dying. There's that one from a few months ago where they're like, re- like a lot of dudes think recycling is gay. Yeah. It's just, I, I mean, this is like textbook, just like internalized, like misogyny or something <laughs> like that. Or it's I don't just know. like, it's, it's fucking weird. Yeah, the only way I can see this being a problem is like where restrictions are lifted and people are seeing their friends and then like being embarrassed to wear a mask around their friends because they, they think it's not tough. Like, I guess. Yeah, I'll get the virus and I'll beat the shit out of it. What do you yeah. think? I'm scared? Yeah. What they need to do is get like camo masks with like that deer on it. The, yeah. That deer that like weirdly enough, like I thought it before I saw the deer, I always thought it was like the Zumba logo, like a person dancing. Someone will know what I'm talking about. I don't about. know what you're talking about. Someone will know out there. Yeah, you need to do like a tactical camo. Yeah. Hunting. Bright animals. orange. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, Spray some deer piss on it. Put some of those like designs from those Facebook t-shirts like, my name is Joseph. I was born in October. <laughs> I like to mess with wood. I love America. And I'm a Pisces. And if you don't like it, you can get the hell out of my country. Yeah. The ultra specific based, yeah. on, based on all of your like cookie data. <laughs> yeah. Like, wow, this shirt is perfect for me. <laughs> yeah. How do they know? I have to get it. <laughs> yeah, I'm a millennial. I got crippling anxiety. <laughs> I hate my roommates. And I'll tear up an Applebee's. Uh, that's my favorite one. <laughs> Uh, anyways, uh, moving on. Man stabbed with homemade throwing star during downtown Pensacola fight. Florida man has started building his own weapons. Florida man is back. Isn't it beautiful? They reopened the state and now <laughs> Florida man is back in the wild. We are the true virus. <laughs> Florida man is returning. Turns out the virus down. was the virus. Yeah. And, and we're the cure. But yeah, this guy, homemade ninja star, just attacks a random fucking person. Yeah. Got in a, a verbal argument and pulled out, pulled out a throwing star. <laughs> I didn't even mention it yesterday that uh, that random attack by Vitaly means that he is also a Florida man now. Yeah. 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 There you go. Sorry. He he started off as a Russian, and he upgraded. Yeah. To Florida man. Man breaks into cancer ward and downs two bottles of sanitizer before falling asleep on hospital bed. If you're gonna overdo it with actual rubbing alcohol, yeah, you might as well do it in a hospital. Do it in the safety of a hospital. Mm-hmm. He also uh, pissed on the floor and like puked and. Uh, well, yeah, I mean he drank like. Tore a curtain down from one of the beds and used it as a blanket. Yes, he drank two bottles of uh, sanitizer, so that would yeah. be the appropriate response. Which I, I thought, I thought hand sanitizer like was m- even more dangerous. Like I, I thought uh, certain, too much aloe. Well, I, aren't like certain types of like rubbing alcohol? Well, yeah, it's uh, like a se- it's like seventy like percent. But is it, it like it's a specific type of alcohol? I think that like actually is like much more toxic. I may be wrong here, but. Uh, I was always told that like rubbing alcohol is I'm sure that, yeah, very, that, very al- bad for you. Alcohol at that high of a percentage would probably do some serious immediate damage. Whereas the normal alcohol just does prolonged damage. Yeah. And taking yeah. it in like gel. Mm. Mm, hand sanitizer. To take on the coronavirus, U.S. vaccine makers consider an unprecedented strategy. Working together. <laughs> Sounds like socialism to me. Yeah. All these companies should be working completely independently. All on the same thing, and you know whoever never finishes, sharing their work, never share their work, and whoever finishes uh, first gets is, a billion dollars. Is the best, and they yeah. get the money, and the rest don't. I don't. We're, you you're telling me all of our fucking pharma companies should be sharing their resources to get something done quicker, and then you know sharing the you know the proceeds of that together, and then giving us the vaccine right, for free, Stalin, to, to make <laughs> society as a whole healthier. Oh, you're saying everyone should get the vaccine, no matter how hard they work. Come on. <laughs> Weird. Weird. Anyways, hope it works out for them. I'm sure that uh, some regulation is going to come in and say they can't do this. Nope. Some lobbyists. Nope. This is anti-competitive. Yes. Like, that was, I mean, it's the coronavirus. Yep. Get it out of there. Everyone, go back to your own labs. Yep. There you go. And final headline. French told to eat more cheese as pandemic causes sales to plunge 60%. Finally, my time has arrived. It is yeah. time to party. I mean, that, this is scary. I mean, if you've been to France, the fromage, it, it flows like water. Yeah. It's all, you, you pro, there's probably a ton of interference every time you did that. <laughs> it was wrapped up around my leg. I had to move it. Yeah, it's just going to be... Whoosh. Well, it's, it's sorry. If there was interference, it was because the mic cable yeah. got wrapped here's around a, Here's a tech tip. Uh, if you're using a wired microphone, you know, don't whip the fucking cord around like it's... Uh, uh, Jesus, this episode is fucking ruined. Anyway. Well, we got him another mic up here. It's fine. Uh, yeah. Lots of cheese. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And uh, yeah, there's a big, there's a big uh, potato surplus worldwide right now because you know people pretty much only eat fries when they're out at like yeah. restaurants or like food carts or sporting events or anything like that. Not really a home meal. Yeah, usually. people don't really cook fries at home. There's there was like pictures a month ago of just this fucking massive mountain of uh, unused potatoes out in like Idaho or something. They're like, I don't know, we're gonna like burn it or some shit. Who cares? I'm like. People in this country are fucking starving. Send a couple of yeah. Irish over there. Yeah. They'll take care yeah. of it. They'll gobble that shit right up. Mm-hmm. And the French, they are going to do good, a lot of work on this cheese shortage. Uh, uh, cheese shortage. Cheese shortage. Cheese shortage. Not cheese shortage, but people need to buy cheese and eat yeah, it. Yeah, cheese surplus. Yeah. You know who loves cheese? Kim Jong-un. Uh, this is like to take some of that cheese. Coming out of this pandemic, it might finally just be the shot of diabetes in the arm that Europe needs to get really fat. Yeah. There's gonna be so many things that they miss. Well, there was, that was a big, uh, that was a cultural thing in like Germany. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first generation after the war, they all, got, they all got real fat. 
Because they had, you know, oh, finally I can have fries and mayonnaise. Yeah, because, <laughs> you know, the last years of the war and then, like, the 10 years after it, yeah. there's, like, not a lot of food to go around. So once Germany was, like, on its feet again, everyone just ate to their heart's content. Meanwhile, the UK, uh, Boris Johnson's like, yo, we can't be fat anymore. Do you see that? No. Because uh, his obesity was one of the reasons that he had it so severely. Yeah. So, obviously, uh, typical conservative fashion, you don't care about anything until it affects mm-hmm. you. Now he's like unveiling this nationwide plan uh, about like fighting obesity. Oh, I'm sure Michael Bloomberg will fly on over and give him some pointers. Now listen here. You gotta ban the big gulp. <laughs> Get rid of the big gulp. You gotta put limits on the size of the drinks. Yeah. No one needs that much soda. <laughs> well, anyways, hope that works out for the UK. Yeah. Uh, can't really see it being enforced. Plus everything there is meat and potatoes, just like here. Everything here is deep fried. Yeah, Everything the, here is meat and potatoes. The national diet of both of our countries. What? There's peas inside of the, the meat pie. That's I'm getting ve- my veg. That's a vegetable. Yeah. Look, just because I have 10 strips of bacon for breakfast, there's also a fried tomato for some reason here. Yeah. And a bunch of beans with like, yes, the beans are just covered in sugar for some reason. And some black pudding. Yeah. <laughs> some uh, black pudding. It's very healthy. Yeah. Black pudding got a lot of iron. And yeah, there's just a one tomato that you just threw in the oven for like ten minutes. It's just a fucking tomato. Oh, what you don't eat? <laughs> you don't eat two thousand calories for breakfast? I do love the English breakfast. I was I was skeptical. It is delicious. Of it. And yeah. I was like, yeah, this is all good. It's, it all works together it's quite well. It's unhealthy as fuck. Yeah. Like, you know, I, not that we have any. Not that we well, can I, really say much here. But I, yeah. in America, no breakfast. Well, no breakfast or a two thousand calorie just like bowl of sugar. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Irish breakfast is where it's at. Prote- actually, specifically. Is that where you leave before eating? Northern Irish, uh, the Belfast. Belfast has the breakfa- best breakfast on earth. Yeah, okay. Anyways, that's it for <laughs> Weekly Weird News. Uh, check out um, our w- most recent videos over here. We have a new episode of News Dump, uh, and a new episode of Tech News Day. And if you're a Patreon supporter or YouTube member, head to uh, the community tab on YouTube or go to Patreon because we just uploaded a uh, podcast, uh, Q&A podcast, where we answer yeah. a bunch of your questions. And we'll be doing more of those in the future. Check those out, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.